Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. We're going out in the garden today and I'm going to be explaining everything about my garden, everything I've planted and everything that I've done this year. This year I did not do a planting of the garden video. That's why we're going to go out there now and I'm going to show you everything I've planted and explain a little bit more of why I did what I did and how I did things. Let's get going. There's going to be no golf cart today just because we're just going to be walking around the garden area. I'm going to show you the before and after. I'm going to show you last year's gardens and how I expanded on them. For those of you who don't know, just explain a little bit about how all of this came together. Let me turn you around and show you the new gardens. This is my new garden area. It's huge. And this is the before. So this whole thing was clear and I had these four ground gardens last year that I started with. I put them in between some stakes and I put some bird netting up. There's some bird netting that's on here. So that's why that almost looks empty, but it's closed in. I do have a door right here that I created and let's go inside. This simply opens I have zip ties zip tied to there and I just put four sticks together and made a cute little door. This garden last year was onions, corn, and carrots and none of them made it. It was kind of a failure. I tilled up the land underneath these gardens and a lot of weeds grew through so that's why I redid these gardens this year underneath this pile is some cardboard which I wet down and eventually that cardboard's going to break down and these plants are going to grow through into the ground. This year this is my watermelon garden. I did put some marigolds in there to ward off the pests but I don't really know if that's working. These crates are there to hold the watermelons as they grow so I can move those around to wherever the plants are. This one is already starting to grow. There's two of them starting to grow. And then there'll be a couple more, but the weight of those watermelons, instead of having them grow inside here, they're going to grow on top of the crates. Now there are only one, two, three, four, five, six watermelon plants in here, and I don't know if all of them made it. So that's why I planted more than this garden should have held. I also do have a squash, an extra squash plant that I put there. And as we move over here, this is my pumpkin and cantaloupe garden. I also have the marigolds in between. These are not doing as well as I want them to either. These plants started just like those and these don't seem to be going anywhere. They are getting a little bit bigger and it doesn't look like they're too eaten up by pests, but this one is. That one is. Those two are the same size as I planted them. There's one right there. Another one that I planted. These three are doing well, but the other three or four are not. And as you can see, there are some holes in here from diggers. I don't know where they've gotten in, but I can imagine it's somewhere within this fence. Now we're moving over to the squash garden. And like I said before, this is an extra squash plant. So I think I'm going to be moving it inside this garden somewhere, probably right there because there's nothing there. There are six plants in here, but again, there's supposed to be seven. I think something dug up the first one. My friend and I made this branch trellis. I didn't have to buy cattle panel. Underneath this garden is also cardboard, but these branches provide a place for the leaves to climb and grasp onto. They have these little things right here that will grasp onto the wood. Here's something that's growing already, which is a little squash plant. Uh, there are ants on this too, but as you can see, I did put diatomaceous earth on some of these, but there are some ants still. Here's another one growing. This trellis will allow the squash to hang in the middle, which is what I'm hoping for. And if this trellis does not work out, I can always put that cattle panel from here to here because these are also probably going to need a trellis, so I have to start making a trellis for these. Okay, as so we come over here, can't really see what any of this is yet, but these two rows is nettle. This row is viola flowers, borage, 
pansies and calendula. All of these are edible plants and medicinal plants. I don't know why it's not doing so well. I did sow these direct into the ground rather than germinating the seeds on the insides. This will eventually pop up. Okay, I did take out that fence line that was right here. So this was my old gardens and now we're into my new gardens. I am going to be putting a door right here. These are the extension of the strawberry gardens. I wanted it to be sort of a, like a walkthrough. And with this scrap lumber that I got, I didn't have enough pieces to make it be the same size. So I kind of just put it together in a specific way. It's just kind of like a walk-in garden. The other 25 strawberry plants are inside here, but they are not growing so well. And I'm wondering if that's because I had a net over them for the longest time and it's, they just decided not to grow. Now over here, I created this strawberry tower. I did cover it with the insect netting and hopefully other things have stayed out of here as well. But as you can see, some of the strawberries are starting to grow and I'm really loving that because strawberries are my favorite fruit. Hopefully this strawberry tower garden will be plentiful. Okay, this is the inside of the new garden area. I did put wood chips on the ground in this whole entire place. I've got a line of plants right there that will go through in a minute. I'm going to get to this garden here. I've got lettuce in here. And in the beginning, because I direct sowed all of these, I put this insect netting over it. However, something has already gotten in here, as well as this big hole right here. So something has been getting in here, but this is my lettuce garden. I have one, two, three, four, five, six types of lettuce in here. Butter crunch lettuce, Swiss chard, kale, spinach, and I forget the other one, but there's another one. I put dill in the middle because that's supposed to be an insect deterrent for lettuces. Okay, now before we get to the rest of these, I'm gonna go through these. Now this is ginger, and I direct sowed these as well. I did not germinate them in the house. These two right here, and so far they are not growing. I don't know if I was supposed to germinate them in the house, but it's been weeks and weeks and just nothing has come up except for weeds. I don't think any of that is ginger. I don't eat much cabbage, so I, I only planted like three things of cabbage in there. Maybe uh, there are three coming up. Broccoli, I direct sowed in here. I don't see any of that coming up. Brussels sprouts, same thing, about two extra tomato plants these two right here. This is valerian root. These two are radishes. And I decided to put my raspberries and blueberries in containers this year and just grow them in containers. I am going to be placing them over in that area over there once they grow a little bit more, but that's where their home will be. I decided not to put these in the ground. I'm going to show you my tomato garden. Now this garden is about nine foot by three foot and I planted too many tomatoes in there, but they're doing semi well. And if they don't, then I think the ones that are doing well will grow and the other ones will just die off. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you the trellis that I made. Last year, I had the tomatoes in the ground gardens that I showed you guys over there. And I think I got two tomatoes, the rest were eaten. I only planted about four tomato plants, but this year I grew 38 tomato plants. And in this specific garden, there are 24 tomato plants. Now I know that is too much, but I am going with it. I'm, I'll learn from it. There's only supposed to be one tomato plant every one to two feet. I do have another tomato garden down there and I kind of tried to learn from that. I was going to make a second or sorry, a third tomato garden down there to transplant some of these, but decided not to. So this trellis, I had a bunch of these stakes that I used for putting in the fence. So I cut them to size and just made this structure. And the reason I made the structure was to be able to hold these twine-like things, just 
vertical lines that go all the way down and as the tomatoes grow the the purpose is to connect them with clips going up so it has something to grow up and they can grow all the way up to there if not more I did start pruning some of these at the bottom some of them are starting to grow so that is nice but as these are growing and some of them might not grow because there's too many they're going to latch on to that twine and I'll just continue to clip them. I did put the diatomaceous earth on the bottom hoping that ants and and other bugs would be deterred but so far these look these are looking good and so far the whole trellis is holding through the winds and it just it looks good I think I'll probably leave it up in the winter it could have been a little bit more I could have measured out stuff a little bit more but it's my first time doing it I am really proud of this tomato trellis now in the middle of here I put carrots Carrots do well in the middle of a tomato garden. I also put carrots from here all the way to here. Oh. I do have a basil plant behind each of these sets of gardens and an extra basil plant right there, which deters bugs. I can see another tomato coming in. These are all regular tomatoes grown from seeds from a regular tomato at the store. And we're gonna come over here to the corn garden. I've got seven ears of corn here. They are starting to grow a little bit taller. I don't have any pest deterrents in this garden, but it's okay. It looks like they're growing nicely, so hopefully nothing will eat them up. This is my garlic garden. There's about 35 bulbs in here. I do come in here and take out the weeds when I can. That straw that's around there helps as a weed barrier and keeps the moisture in. I did plant these first and I planted them way before I planted any of these other plants. So they started growing earlier. Okay, this is the other tomato garden that I created. I did have two extra gardens that I built up right here because I had the space to do it. And with the extra tomato plants, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are nine in here. And that is actually the right size for this garden area according to Google. I did put three basil plants in there to ward off pests. These I did not build a trellis for but I might and if not I might just use plant stakes or even like tomato trellises or whatever. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. This area right here is where I'm going to put the raspberries and blueberries. Like this whole section is going to be blocked off for that. I'm going to remove these, fill that whole thing with wood chips, and just place the planters next to the fence, hoping that it could use the fence as a trellis of some type. I might even build a little cage around all of those so that the animals don't eat the raspberries and blueberries. Uh, especially the squirrels because I have noticed that they can get through all of these holes and they can climb that and I just don't want the pests in here so this whole area might be caged off I would do something like a DIY framed out little building maybe with a door uh, those are the thoughts that I had in my head but I am going to be removing that and making this whole section like a little berry bush section as we come over here this is my bean garden so these are sugar snap peas and green beans that are growing I also do have the marigolds here to ward off pests and I did create this trellis with netting and I have to fix it a little bit but it's working they are using the trellis to climb I do have some beans growing they're pretty big beans too. So I could always harvest those and cook them up or I'm going to be selling a lot of this produce eventually. So that's my cute little bean garden. Now as we come over to this garden, this is my pepper garden and I don't know what is wrong with me and peppers but apparently they do not like growing for me. The ones that I direct sowed are all on this side so not many of them have come up. Only a couple of them have come up but for the most part those bigger ones are ones that I germinated on the inside of the house and they're just not that big. 
I did put thyme in the middle and that wards off insects over here, but those pepper plants are just not growing. I mean, true, they did start about that size and they're a little bit bigger, but they're not that much bigger. So I'm hoping those hurry up. Okay, now we're moving over here to the cucumber garden. These uh, trellises I also made with branches. This one I had last year in the ground gardens over there and it worked for my cucumbers so that's why I used it again for this garden as well as making another trellis to put right next to it. This is one thing that I want to talk about. This is a marigold. This marigold is supposed to ward off pests from getting onto these Plants. Now I already tried the diatomaceous earth, but as you can see, I don't know, I'm going to zoom in here. These are all ants and I have sprayed them. I don't understand exactly what to do about these ants. They are basically eating this plant alive and I need to figure out how to get them off of there. I don't know how to get them off of there, but they are all the way up the stem there's you guys have any ideas about how to get the ants off of the cucumber plants and the marigold plants drop them in the comments below i do have one two three four five six seven eight nine cucumber plants in here i am hoping that that's going to be okay and that this whole garden is going to hold all of that greenery and foliage because they grow to be pretty big. Last year I had two plants that were connected to here and it filled up that whole thing. These are starting to grow and actually I did find all oh, right there. There's already a cucumber growing. There's a couple in there too. But that one is another one. There's another one. Coming over here to our last garden. This is my zucchini garden. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants in here, except only three or four of them seem to be thriving. The rest seem to be going slower. I did also plant the marigolds in here as a pest deterrent. There is cardboard under all of these gardens. They can continue growing into the ground once the cardboard composts. A lot of these plants don't have the ants in the marigolds. This is my new garden section and I feel it's just a lot more neater, it's tidier, it's set up better. Everything is in order. It's not as chaotic as it was last year. This whole section I can walk into now. I do also have a sunflower garden that I put on the outside of these gardens and I germinated 21 sunflowers inside my house but only two or three of them made it. After I planted them, I planted all 21 and this is the only one that seems to be taking. These two are also taking, but it took them a while. And I also direct sowed a bunch more just to try to get more going. But it is on the outside of this garden area. So animals can dig in there if they wanted to. I did put these wood chips in this whole area right here just so I didn't have to mow it or weed eat it. And so far I have mowed once and it has been a great help having that border of wood chips around the entire garden. The other door, one door is going to go over there at the end and the other door is going to go over here. I'm going to make it a double door. It'll swing open and I will bungee it in the middle. For right now, I, I do have this just connected here and I just take that off, but I would rather have nice doors. Another thing I'm going to be doing is adding this fencing all the way around here just to make it look uniform. But the 100 feet that I had for the second roll, I've used 50 feet of it and I need 70 feet. So I need to buy some more before I put it up so that I can make this. Just I'm going to fence the whole thing in and make it look the same. Now this greenhouse is what holds my plants before I plant them. There's really nothing in there right now except for some plants that didn't make it. But I 
have been keeping those ventilation things open. I don't know why I probably closed them because I don't have anything in there now. There's supposed to be chives in these two planters, but nothing is growing in there, so I might use those pots for something else. I also have another two planters over here that I tried growing strawberries and that's them and they just don't seem to be making it so that looks like a tomato and I don't know what's in there but these two just are not doing well. My new garden section, gotta love it. It just looks so neat and tidy and a lot better than last year's setup and let's hope these tomatoes make it. I think they will if I keep them in control and just keep training them going up the the twine and these lettuces will start growing and then I could probably take that netting off. I don't know if I'd want to though but we will see. Now although this is not part of my produce gardens this is my porch plants and Almost all of them are lemon. Eventually these plants are going to be used for growing lemon trees as well as selling them to the town. And I'm also going to be gifting them to the Airbnb guests. They, it will be one given to each of the guests for their welcome basket. And they could either take them home and try to grow a lemon bush or keep them in a room or a car just for smelling the leaves because it leaves a nice lemon scent. These three stands I'm going to be putting in the small bedroom in the winter and that's where all of these plants will continue to grow. I don't think I'm going to keep any of the lemon plants out here for the winter so I will bring those in. These are my zinnias which are being eaten by something probably snails. So I tried putting diatomaceous earth on there too and just waiting for them to bloom. That was my garden area. It is pretty amazing, right? A lot better than it was last year. I've done a lot of work. It's taken a lot of months to get all of that prepped and prepared and even all the planning it took to figure out what I was going to grow when I was going to grow it and now to watch them all grow up because I have never planted this many plants at the same time. In a month or two, we're gonna see exactly how these gardens are holding up. Next year, I won't have to do any of the building of the fence, the wood chips, building of the gardens, putting in the dirt, but I'll maintain them and just have a nice garden section every year. I will be creating a garden section in my small bedroom kind of like a greenhouse section so that all of these lemon plants can go in there as well as any of the potted plants that can't take the cold weather in the winter. I'm going to be bringing them inside so the pomegranate, kiwi, dragon fruit, all of those will come inside and next year I'm going to have a whole new setup like greenhouse racks with heating mats and lights on every shelf. Thank you to my friend Tracy for recommending all of that and it's going to be set up this year so that I'm prepared for next year because this year I was not prepared. But we will see how all of these plants do in my gardens. Now you guys know exactly what I'm growing and where they're at and I'll be posting more stuff whether that's in shorts or in video so you can see more of the progress. So. I hope you guys are enjoying my journey. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Click the notifications bell so you can receive a notification every time I post a new video, which is every Sunday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Everything that I've done this year to my garden as opposed to, don't put that. Arugula. Don't put arugula. It was a bee.